Hey, welcome to the CNCC Bachelor's of Applied Science dent in Dental Hygiene Degree Completion Program. So I'm going to give you a little walkthrough on D2L. There are lots of great um, YouTube videos on using D2L also, but uh, sometimes it can be nice to see the use of something looking about what it looks like for you as a student and as an instructor. So um, when you first hop into a course, let's see, we're gonna show you something here. So to select a course, um, you will have a list of all the courses that you have access to, that you're registered for. I have a long list on mine. I won't scroll through them all for you. But you can t pin the courses that you're currently taking. You can see how these little pins are gray. These ones are, are um, not grayed out. The gray pin keeps it up at the top. So you can see how they also have kind of a bluish background. So then you can go to the course that you want to select and hopefully it will load. There we go. Now, when you first open up a course, it's going to pop up this widget and you can see down here that there's quite a few um, pieces of information. I will show you where this also lives just in your course. Um, but you're going to find information on your instructor, guidelines on having success in the course, and then a number of links to things on the CNCC um, website. So we have things like accommodations and accessibility. We have access to the library, which is very helpful for um, research because you have access um, digitally to all those things like journals and, and things that may have paywalls, we can get you access to those. So if there's ever a journal that you're trying to access, um, you may do like a Google Scholar search or use another search engine and it says you don't have access or you have to pay for that, come into the um, library area and see if you can access it through there. If you're still not able to access it, we can contact the library and see if we can get it for you, right? So um, that can be helpful, especially if you're planning ahead for projects and assignments. We also have the Gateway Center, which is great for um, helping out with writing. You can set up um, times to meet with, um, right now it's Carrie Olson um, and in the Rangeley campus. Um, which is where all of your courses are based out of, even though you are not there on campus. Um, but, but you can set up a, a time, you can email with her and ask her for help on, you know, reviewing something that you wrote, um, or if you find that you could use some assistance on maybe some study habits, you feel like you're struggling, um, this is a, a great place for resources. The Gateway Center is, is amazing. Um, there's also a link to IT in case you're having some technical issues. It tells you how to submit a help ticket, help desk ticket, um, financial aid, our behavioral health services um, for any students that feel like they could use some additional help and assistance, just some support. Um, this is also a ben beneficial place to go um, and always talk with your instructors too. And myself, you can talk to the program directors also. Um, also, if there is a report of an incident or a concern, all of that is located here. And oh, the bookstore one is still not working. We'll have to work on that one. So. You can click dismiss once you scroll through all of those and then it won't pop up every single time you pop, you get into the course. Um, your course homepage, this is what this is. This gives you um, your announcements are gonna be located under your course homepage. So if you ever need to find an announcement and you're not there, click course homepage and that's gonna bring you back to those. 
Um, and then we also have your content, which I'm going to change my view really quick. So this makes more sense as a student. Right, so we're back to that course home. Then we can go to our content page, and this is where all your modules and a lot of your information is going to live, right? So um, this is where all of those little widgets that popped up at the beginning that you can later dismiss. Then if you need to find those later after you've dismissed that little pop-up, um, because you've scrolled through and you've read all of them, um, you go to this welcome start here, okay? And this is gonna show you all the same things. So if you need to contact your instructor, right? You don't remember exactly their email or their phone number if they have one listed, right? Because you have this last minute emergency that came up. Then we can go to the welcome start here. All those links for accommodations, um, for the Gateway Center, the library, all of those live here, okay? So you've got that information there. So if you need to find those, you can find those there. Um, you also have additional library resources. So here's the library page, online library. The, these are all links that are gonna take you to the library resources at CNCC. So say you find an article that's, on, again, a journal, we can, it most likely is gonna reside in one of these um, online libraries, journals, and resources. Right, so you have access to those. You do not need to pay for journal articles whenever you're doing research. Please do not pay for journal articles. I personally like to use Google Scholar a lot for searches, um, especially if I'm trying to find a PDF version of a resource because it will show to the far right if there is like an access, a fully accessible link to a journal or a research paper that I'm trying to read the whole thing of and not just the abstract so um that's that's a good place if you're trying to find access um that's kind of my go-to is google scholar and i just google google scholar and then it takes me to it um so whenever we are writing throughout the basdh program we are going to be using apa formatting um, you are not required to have purchased the publication manual of the American um, Psycholo Psychological Association 7th edition. You need to make sure if you do buy one that you are using the 7th edition. If you're looking up examples online, you also need to make sure that you are looking at the 7th edition, not previous editions, because those are no longer relevant. So they've updated. They go through and they update these, right? Like. In the 90s, we had different APA requirements because we didn't have journal access online, right? That was not as, as common. You'd have to go get the physical copy or have it printed out at a library. So um, citations and references were very different than they are now. So um, this is why they update them and we are in the seventh edition. So there have been some updates to things, especially in regards to accessing information online, um, because we need to know how to reference and cite things correctly. And the seventh edition has made some changes there that better fit our current research, researchable models and access to information. Right, so there's lots of great information on APA here. Again, the CNCC Gateway Center can be helpful. Let them know, right, what type of writing you're using because some programs use other types of um, formatting like MLA. So we use APA because that is research, scientific research-based referencing and formatting. Um, but here are some great links. There's a bunch of videos, 
on quoting, paraphrasing, and summarizing, so we make sure that we're not plagiarizing. Um, there's this APA 7th and 7th edition in minutes YouTube playlist. So these can be really helpful. You do not necessarily have to have the book, but if you like to have a paper version, something you can feel and flip through and write on and mark up, you're welcome to um, purchase the APA manual. Make sure it's that seventh edition. If it's used, who cares? Um, then there's also this Q and A section that's going to be present in all of your courses. Um, this has a bunch of D2L tutorials. So if you need some help on those, go, go to those tutorials. And then, um, here is a Q and A discussion. So you can just click on that. This is open all throughout the semester. And this is really a place for, um, you to be able to communicate right you can enter your subject and then put a question or asking for assistance you know um this can be a lot of things but your ability to communicate with each other throughout the course it's not something you are required to use but it's there um and then you'll see in each of your courses you're gonna have eight weeks that are all gonna be different modules, right? So of course, when you click on a module, it's gonna have more details here. It's gonna tell you what you need to be doing. It's gonna have, it may not have all of these, but it may have some of these, right? You may have a quiz for um, every week. You might have a summary post that's due um, each week. We're not requiring responses for summary posts. However, it can be really beneficial to read what your classmates have been, you know, what their takeaway was from the week's topics. Um, you may have individual assignments, right? Then you're also gonna have resources that are not related to your textbook. You will have textbook resources, and then you're also gonna have a section for upcoming assignments right so that you can see each of those areas now up here at the top you can see you have a lot of different tabs right so you can go to the assignments tab and again these are not indicative of the class you are currently taking these are just placeholders for whenever we're creating courses but you might have reflective statements that you need to do you may have a number of individual um, assignments you may have a, a larger course project that has a final project. Everyone is going to have in each course this e-portfolio. And this is going to be a well-rounded um, project that's going to connect with each course. And then within your capstone in the summer semester, you will wrap up your e-portfolio. So that's just your nice professional portfolio. But this is what your assignment section could look like. If you have discussions, that's where this will live. Your Q&A is in there, right? An introduction activity. And then if you do have um, weekly summary posts, those are gonna live within the discussion tab. If your course has quizzes, those are going to live under the quiz tab. Of course, they are also located in your modules. Then you also have your grades, right? So this is going to give you your feedback with comments. Um, quizzes are going to automatically populate. If you have a quiz in a class, you do have multiple attempts to take that quiz. You will have two attempts for each quiz and your highest grade quiz will be your final grade. Right, so you can take that quiz up to two times until the due date um, and your highest grade. So if you take it once and you don't like the grade you got or something was confusing and you went back and read up on it to see you know, what you missed, you can retake the quiz and for a second attempt, right? So quizzes in this course are not intended to prep you for national boards because you've already done that. Um, that's not our focus, but it's more to just help you uh, hone in on some of your information that you're taking in, in particularly from your textbook. So 
This is just to help keep you focused on some of those points, right? Make sure that you're actually looking at your resources every week. Um, not every class has quizzes. But we have our grades. We have our class list, which is going to list um, your instructor um, and other students that are in your class. And then under more tools, um, there's lots of different things in here, but the other one that can be really helpful is this calendar. So the calendar can be a nice way to be able to see your due dates for things. Don't get overwhelmed. This is because I have so many classes. Um, yours, yours isn't going to look quite like this. Um, you're only going to be taking two classes at once, but generally speaking, most of your assignments are going to be due Fridays or Sundays by 11.59 p.m. Mountain Time, Denver Mountain Time, um, excluding week eight when things are due sooner because that week your instructors have to have grades in um, by Friday at noon. So you have to have those week eight things, which is typically your portfolio that needs to be in much sooner than Sunday. Usually that's like a Tuesday, Wednesday at the latest. So make sure that you check those out. So your calendar can be helpful to know when something is due. Um, you can also click on those and it opens up some more information for you if you need to. Having a paper calendar can be helpful too. I, I know for myself when I went back to school, that was helpful. Um, to be able to look at that and like there was something for me of writing things down that really helped me. So this is just kind of an overview on using D2L for your BAS DH courses. Okay, so now we're back at that course homepage. Content takes us to more of the details, right, of each module each week and it's gonna give you more detailed information. All right, make sure you reach out to your instructors and speak to them if you have any questions and you need some assistance with anything. Good luck, we're here to help support you.